So what I want you to do for this um, 30 minutes to an hour of virtual class session is I want you to kind of uh, illustrate with this simulation uh, where the ideas of energy and momentum come from and how it's uh, useful. Um, so this is, by the way, a simulation that you probably have seen me use for chapter three. It's uh, called Algodoo and it, um, it's a free simulation. You can actually get it for yourself and play with it yourself. Um, and I, well, it, it's a two dimensional physics simulation and it, it can be very useful in illustrating some ideas that um, may be a bit abstract if you just look at it on the textbook page. So um, let me get started. So this is where kind of ideas of energy comes from. It's an um, intuitive idea. You have something that's um, like a basketball or a ball that you drop and it bounces off the ground and it kind of bounces for a bit. And uh, here you see that it dropped and eventually comes to rest uh, um, on the ground. But hopefully most people have some experience playing with um, uh, bouncy balls. So depending on the material property of the, of the ball, sometimes they bounce around longer. They bounce higher and stick around for longer. And, um, and so this is a bit unrealistic in terms of <laughs> what we expect to happen um, in every interaction, even the bounces. I think golf balls are surprisingly bouncy if you bounce it on a hard surface. And even those will eventually come to a stop on the ground. Because here I said uh, what's called restitution or elasticity uh, to be basically 100%. That's not a realistic thing to have for any real object. What's more realistic is that it's a little bit less than 100%. So over time, it'll kind of go to, uh, it'll eventually rest on the ground. But maybe what's more realistic um, that you can compare with your everyday experience is a pendulum. Um, I think one of the simulations that, uh, that you can look at that, uh, uh, that's linked from the course modules is a spring. So a uh, mass on a spring. So let me show you a, a pendulum setup. So I have a ball that's going to be tied to, to that thing through a chain or string. And uh, let me see how it looks. Okay, now I can apply a force on it, hang it off to the side and let go. And it's like real life pendulum. If you let it still, then it go, goes back and forth for quite some time. And um, one way to describe how this uh, sw swinging action back and forth happens for quite a bit length of time is to associate some quantity with this motion. And to the extent that you can idealize it, you would say that um, there is some quantity that's associated with this motion and that quantity is somehow conserved. And um, if you want to think more quantitatively about it, you could look at, oh, maybe it's uh, how fast it's moving. So maybe it's the velocity that's conserved. So with this simulation, I can actually plot the velocity. And when you look at it, it's not quite uh, that the velocity is conserved because if you look at it, the velocity actually changes quite a bit throughout the motion. There's a point where it actually comes briefly to rest. So it's not velocity, but uh, something is conserved because each time it comes back, it looks like it's coming to about the same velocity it had before. And in terms of idealizing it, here's one way you can actually idealize it. Um, actually, let me kind of move it off to the side and I'll try to stop it there. And he, one way to idealize it to say, 
uh, there's no air drag because this is not swinging in air. So air actually is slowing it down a little bit. So when you turn off air drag, then you see that it comes up to, I guess exactly the same velocity was it before. So the idealization you need is a pendulum that's swinging back and forth in vacuum. Um, so really energy, the concept of energy comes from observing these natural phenomena where uh, something seems to be constant and that something isn't necessarily what we are talking about in kinematics of velocity because here the velocity or speed is changing quite a bit throughout its motion. So, um, so people spent, you know, quite a bit of time. <laughs> I think your text kind of gets it uh, at a little bit of how long it took people, um, it took people to kind of figure out what, um, uh, how to quantify this uh, aspect that's conserved. So, um, so uh, I guess I should just bring up the textbook section because this is part I'm going to be skipping a little bit and um, it goes to the fact that um, uh, it, it's a work, uh, force acting over a distance that, uh, that characterizes how you change this conserved quantity. And, that, um, and so let me just leave it there for now. And what I want to do is kind of show with, um, with the different aspects of the simulation, how um, that idea of work can be used to show how that um, quantity of energy um, can be changed. So I have this goal here, uh, let me just, uh, uh, add a little bit of a way to apply a known amount of force in a predictable way. So a thruster, I'm just gonna give myself a way to turn it off and on. Um, so the way this works is if I uh, press this button, then oops, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> uh, let me say thruster does not follow Jim. Okay, so if I press a button, I can turn the thruster on so it can off that way. Let me zoom out a little bit, and I can uh, I can show plot again so that I can quantify what happens as I uh, apply a force. So as I apply a force, it increases in velocity. And I hope that uh, what you see in this graph makes sense. The thruster is applying a fixed amount of force. The ball that rolls off the screen has some amount of mass. So it, it has a fixed, a constant acceleration. And that's what this graph is showing. The velocity is increasing at a constant rate until the moment when I turned it off. And right now, if I just let it keep rolling, it's just gonna roll off. All right, so let me bring it back. Um, so what I want to show here now is, all right, so, um, so this mass that's sitting there right now has uh, zero, you could say it has zero energy. And one way to give it some energy is by applying a force. And up, it'll turn out that it's that force applied over this distance that fixes how much energy we give. And once it has some energy, then it keeps on rolling. Um, now, what I want to see, so um, let me go back. Um, so while it's rolling here, it has some amount of energy and well, it's rolled off the screen and, but you can see here in the speed. So there's an also energy that we can associate with this speed here. That's what we call kinetic energy. And by the action of the force acting on that ball, it gave it, it did some work, gave it the kinetic energy, and now it has that kinetic energy and it's gonna roll on forever. That kinetic energy will be there until something stops it. Um, now, you can have the energy conserved, but not conserved in the, uh, into that one form. The energy can be transformed from one form to another form. 
And um, let me build a ramp here so that I can show how that energy might be transformed into a different form. So let's see, where's the ramp? trying to build this in real time. I'm building it a little bit above the ground so that I can let the simulation run. Now nah, it rests on the ground. So uh, let me show what I mean. So uh, actually, let me move the ramp off a little bit. It's a little bit too close. Um, all right. So let me run the simulation. I'm going to toggle the um, thruster on, on for a little bit. And before the ball rolls onto the ramp, I'm going to turn it off. And so let me do that. And let me make it go a little bit slower so that I have a little bit of time to speak. All right, so I turn the cluster on, it's gonna run. And let me turn it off when the ball gets around here. So the thruster's off. And now as it rolls onto the ramp, you see it slows down. So what am I saying that there's a cons oops, I didn't build the ramp long enough. Uh, let me go back. <laughs> uh, I'll stop the ball a little bit earlier so that it doesn't have uh, quite enough energy. Um, so I'm gonna stop it around here. So as it rolls on, onto the ramp, you will see that it starts to slow down as you should expect it to. And what I want to claim is that as it's rolling up the ramp, even though it's slowing down, that energy is conserved. And you can see that the amount of kinetic energy that at the beginning is conserved when you see it finally come back to the level ground and it's rolling back the other way. And the speed that it has at the bottom here is quite a bit similar to the speed that it had before it rolled up the ramp. So what we want to say is, even though while it was on the ramp, the speed was slowing down, that there was some quantity that's conserved, that stayed constant, and that quantity is what we call energy. And while it's rolling up, the way we describe it is the kinetic energy turned into gravitational potential energy because uh, we can kind of uh, do this simulation. All right, I'll have to start from scratch. So this is what I want to do. I want to know, oops, yeah, that's fine. I want to know how far up this uh, ball rolls and uh, note where it slows to a stop. And I want to set up an alternate scenario where, okay, so this ball is going to roll down, uh, but at this exact location, I will place a copy of this ball. Um, let's see. I think I'll need to hold on to it for a little bit uh, while the simulation runs. And let me drop it at this location once there's a space for me to drop it. Then you can see we did the velocity of this ball. So when the first ball rolled down, it rolled, uh, rolls at about four meters per second. And when the second ball rolls down, it also rolls at about four meters per second. So there is some quantity of energy that's associated with the disposition that's equivalent to having kinetic energy that's associated with this four meters per second. So this is where the idea of energy is it comes from it, it comes from a kind of desire to describe this interaction in a way that's uh, simpler than trying to describe it in terms of purely kinematics or forces which you looked at in chapters 23 it can get quite a bit mathematical and energy allows you to handle it more conceptually in terms of um, the ball that rolled up here had some amount of kinetic energy and when it's rolled up to this position, the kinetic energy turned into potential energy, but it is still same energy. And that when, when it rolls back down, that potential energy turns into kinetic energy, but, um, 
But if all the right conditions are met, then we have conservation of mechanical energy, and we can use that factor to uh, solve some uh, sim solve some idealized problems. So that's the introduction to the idea of energy, and uh, you know there's a bunch of things that I'm skipping over, which you should read through in the textbook. 